The grace, the mercy, the peace of our God be yours in abundance as you marvel at the cross of Christ and the wonderful treasure of heaven that is yours. Our text for this morning is going to be the gospel lesson that we just heard, the parable of the the shrewd manager. Uh, Let us begin with a prayer. O Lord, help us to use all that you have given to us uh, to that we would use those things to your honor and glory, making most of the time uh, that you have given to us uh, to carry out the work of your church. We pray this in your holy name. Amen. Some of you know uh, that I love popcorn. It's the kind of popcorn that's almost dripping with butter and it's lightly coated with salt. I've been known uh, uh, earlier on in my life, uh, I would get to the movie theater early and I'd buy the big tub that's re, you know, free refills. I would get one done before the movie started so I could enjoy one during the movie. And I think one time I actually, right before the credits, I ran out and filled up one more time to go home. I can't do that anymore, but I love popcorn. Uh, you may also know uh, that I, I love uh, coffee flavored ice cream. When, I go to, when we go to Cold Stone Creamery, I'm always tempted to get the Love It size. Uh, but I'm too cheap, so I always get the small size. It makes me feel better uh, with all the caramel and the nuts and the chocolate that you're eating. Uh, make me feel a little bit about myself. Uh, but we use that word often, don't we? Love. I love this. I love that. And, and maybe it's sort of a strong word, or maybe we use it so much we kind of lose sight of what love really is. Uh, I don't know if I really have tender emotions for, for ice cream. or um, It's not like popcorn is the center of my universe most days. Um, I would love to go to a University of Michigan football game. If I had time and energy, money, uh, I'd probably go golfing more than, than what I do. I, but again, love, that, that's sort of a strong word to the degree that we kind of lose sight of what love means. But because of that, because we use it so often, we lose sight of the fact that there are things that we truly love in this world and it really isn't good for us. There's the danger that things that we love become an obsession, almost an addiction. And that's why Paul warned the Christians, we just heard him say, for the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. Money is a blessing from God. The wealth that we have is is truly a wonderful thing that God gives to us. We can enjoy this world, but the love of that money, that's a different story. It causes all types of problems. And finally, the love of money squeezes God out of first place in our hearts. Jesus addresses what we love in our lives, and he does that to expose What is the object of your love? He wants us to think about what do we focus our time on? What is life all about? And he does that so that we can guard, or he can guard us from spiritual harm and danger. As we work our way back through this parable, I really want to just focus on two key verses that Jesus uses to address our attitude towards the wealth that he distributes among us generously and how we use that. Because, he does this because what is oftentimes seen as sort of uh, this childhood-like crush on the things that we have, that crush oftentimes turns into an idolatrous, adulterous love affair and obsession. And the problem is, oftentimes, we don't even realize that. In verse 9 of the text, uh, Jesus says, he directs us, use worldly wealth to gain friends for yourselves so that when it's gone, you will be welcomed into eternal dwellings. A couple things to note there with that verse. Notice that Jesus says, when it is gone, not if it goes, or it might, you might not always have it. Right? There's no guarantee we're going to have what we have. And finally, when we die, we know we can't take it with us. But maybe a question to ask then, why does he say gain friends for yourselves? Well, notice what those friends are doing. They're welcoming you into heaven. 
Right? As a result of your work carrying out the mission God has given to each of us to use our time and our talents and our treasures to gain friends for Christ, which is the purpose of our lives as we wait for that wonderful gift of heaven, making friends into disciples of Christ is the ultimate goal, that we would be with them in heaven forever that they would enjoy the same treasures that are already ours, right? Use your stuff to invest in people's eternity. The parable of the, the shrewd manager here sort of drives that point home. There he is sitting in his boss's office, and, and he knows it's going to be more than just a pink slip. He knows that unless someone owes him something, he's going to be in a world of hurt. So with the time that he has left, he calls in the, the debtors of his boss, and one of them, he, he wipes the debt in half. The other one knocks off about 20%. Um, and, and so he scratches their back so that in return, when he's out on his own, uh, they will scratch his Dishonest, perhaps. Selfish, maybe. But the point of the parable Jesus focuses on is his wisdom. He does what's best for him. He makes the most of what God or his boss had given to him. James reminds us what our boss in heaven has given to us. Everything that you have comes from heaven, right? And King David demonstrated, emphasized the same thing in that beautiful Psalm 23. That at the end there he says, you anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Now, we aren't in the top 1% of the United States. But when we compare ourselves to certain parts of our country, we would have to agree we're doing pretty good. And if you think of a world, third world country, um, we have a lot um, that uh, people can't compare to. Maybe you can do it this, is as you leave this morning, you can do the wind, windshield check. Uh, and I think when you do that, even with Alex Colva's truck, right, <laughs> you, we realize that it's more than just a cup that overflows. It's at least a five-gallon bucket. Right, that, that's overflowing with things that we sort of take for granted. God tells us how we are to use the things, the possessions he has given to us. In 1 Corinthians chapter 4, he tells us, Now it is required that those who have been given a trust must prove faithful. If not, Jesus told his disciples in the parable, verse 11, so if you have not been trustworthy in handling worldly wealth, who will trust you with true riches? Right? The riches of faith, the riches of God's word, the, the riches, the treasures of heaven. Well, God teaches us what it means to be faithful managers or stewards of the things he's given to us. Paul told Timothy, that when you look at all that you have, make sure you at least take care of your family, right? And then uh, John, as he's trying to encourage God's people in, in Asia Minor, uh, modern day Turkey, he's trying to assure them, yes, you are Christians, following Jesus is the right path to heaven. He uses their actions as the proof that they know who God is and they have the hope of the Savior Jesus. He says in this verse that we ought to use our things to help those who are in need. Right? As we help needy people, we are faithfully using the blessings God has given to us. God uses the government to uh, provide civil peace and order. So God says support that in the appropriate ways as has been designed uh, by your government. And finally, these last two passages, uh, really we should have started with them. Um, but as Paul was going around to Christian congregations, he sent a letter ahead of time and he said, think about how you can support the work of the church 
so that when I come, it's all ready for me and I can get back to Jerusalem and help the poor people there. And so he gives us these directions to regularly think about all the ways we've been blessed and how we can give back, first of all, to the church, to the mission, to the work of God's uh, church. And here is 2 Corinthians chapter 9, right, that we give cheerfully as God has wonderfully and generously given to us. So as we listen to this parable this morning, the question is, what are we doing with the things that God has given to us? Or maybe we could fill in the blank. I love what? The gospel lesson, uh, the last verse there is sort of a second key verse as we fill in that blank. Uh, and, and it's a verse that Jesus really uses as a warning. Right? No servant can serve two masters. Either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. Pastor Timothy Keller up in New York City wrote a book called Counterfeit Gods, and he addresses the issue of idolatry. In addition to the questions that you see there, he also asks some other questions to help us come to the point of realizing what are the gods that we have. And he doesn't suggest you might have gods. He suggests that we do have gods. But these questions are used by him to help us think through what do we see as value? What, are, what do we have interest in? What do we really like to do? Uh, in addition to these questions, you know, what do you daydream about? Uh, what do you think about when you wake up in the morning? What do you think about when you go to bed at night? Right? What consumes your time and your energy, your emotions? As we come to the reality of idolatry, how easily things can slip into our hearts, specifically this morning as we talk about the wealth that God has given to us, it's important for us to ask, who or what do we love? We come together every Sunday morning, and we also can wake up every day and go to bed at night with the wonderful news that by the power of the Holy Spirit, we love Jesus, right? As we think of all the things that he has done for us, the ways that he has blessed us, how he became poor so that we might be rich, what a wonderful way to wake up, what a wonderful way to go to sleep, what a wonderful reason to come together as we think of that cross of Christ, right? As we think about by the power of the Holy Spirit all that God has showered upon us, we love a Christian life. Right? Having purpose in this life of serving our creator who has blessed us in so many ways, who is going to bless us when we go to heaven, that we would use time on this earth to carry out his purpose. And that means that we love people. Specifically this morning, we think about how we use our possessions, uh, our wealth to invest in the eternity of the people around us, recognizing um, that we love others because God still loves us. As we contemplate each and every day, as we enjoy the wealth that we have as Americans, as we have as Christ American Christians, may we always consider how we might use our wealth and our possessions to God's glory and honor, that we can make friends for Jesus who we can welcome into heaven one day, or maybe they will welcome us into heaven one day, but that we all would enjoy this wonderful gift that God has given to us in our Savior Jesus. God, grant us a heart that reflects the Christ-like love that's inside of us through the way in which we use the possessions that he showers upon us. Amen. Please stand. The peace of God which surpasses our human understanding will keep and guard your hearts through faith in Christ. Amen.